Today we're going to take a closer look at water safety for children. Here to tell us what safety measures can be taken to help prevent accidental drownings is Kim Bogan with the Chesapeake Health Department's Baby Care Program. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So can you give me some statistics of how many children drowned? It's a little bit hard to get the actual number mm -hmm. of, of, of children. In the U.S., there's between 3,500 and 4,000 drownings a year. Mm -hmm. That's within the whole country. It depends on child death reviews and their reporting and what have you. So sometimes it's really hard to zero mm -hmm. in on a number of the children. And there's a lot of privacy issues and, and what sure. have you. Um, but children, um, but, uh, let me go back. Um, Drowning is the leading cause of unintentional injury-related death for children one to four. And that's a statistic that really, you know, can send home a lot of information. Mm -hmm. um, and it's 23% of child drownings occur at family gatherings near a pool. When and people so, may actually be on site and this yes. is happening. Yes, yes, exactly. And I'll go through some of the things mm. that parents can do ahead of time to make sure they've, they've mitigated every possibility thing that they can, they can mm -hmm. to help their child and children and all children stay safe, you know. 88% um, of childhood drownings are under some sort of supervision when they drown. And so that's, that's really hard. 46% uh, of that 88 were with a parent. And you think the parent would be spot on. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, drownings take place in many different areas. People, I think, center on pools, mm -hmm. but lakes, streams, creeks, and so on are, are very dangerous. Um, most of the drownings are in pools, but 37% are in lakes and streams, 39% in pools, 18% are in homes bathtubs, uh, um, infant toddler pools, the toilet, unfortunately, things like that, and where there's any source of water. How much water does it take to drown? It can take as little as one to two inches, two to three inches, and drowning can actually start within 20 seconds. And so you think of a, of a small infant. That's mm -hmm. a lot of water for a small infant left, yes. left in. Um, Yes. Alone in the tub. Um, but a little child that is now sitting without support mm -hmm. and splashing and so on, mom probably only has two or three, maybe four inches in there. She hears the phone ring. She picks it up in it's another room on mm -hmm. her way there and comes back into the bathroom. If it's been less than 20 seconds, maybe even, or 20 seconds, which goes by with a blink of an eye, it seems, then her baby could be in serious trouble. So it's, you can't take your eyes off them. If the because phone it, rings and you have to go get water your phone, in, that's the beginning. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. So if your baby is wet and soapy and the phone rings and you're not, you can't reach for it, or, and that's probably not good to do anyway, let mm -hmm. it ring and go back to Nothing it later. Grab your baby, work, put them on your chest and go find the phone or whatever. You know, Definitely. don't ever leave a child for a second. It's just in too big any of a body risk. of water. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. And one thing I wanted to bring attention to is that children with on the autism spectrum mm. disorder, uh, those children tend to want to wander. They are um, seek water for somehow. Mm -hmm. They're not really sure exactly why and how that happens. So families that with a child, and, and I think any child really, mm -hmm. really need to know their surroundings. You know, um, if they are, I'm looking at notes here because I have so much information. Mm -hmm. um, but if they, um, if they, the family is um, is out of their normal routine, mm -hmm. for example, summertime, guests in the house, a child, especially with ASD the spectrum disorder might want to kind of get away from that because mm -hmm. it's overstimulation and just start to walk around. Mm -hmm. um, if the family may have just moved in the neighborhood, they don't know right. that the people across the street are not home and they have an in-ground pool mm -hmm. or even above-ground pool. Mm -hmm. So knowing where your sources of water are, alerting some neighbors like, this mm -hmm. is my child, this is what he looks like or whatever. Please be aware that this child may have a special condition. Exactly. That if you do see him wandering right to, right exactly mm -hmm. I think I don't know exactly what the rules are here but many states many cities mm -hmm. have rules that are you supposed to have a perimeter gate or a fence around mm -hmm. your pool and a self-closing gate mm -hmm. and and it's really good to have an alarm on the water so when nobody's in that water mm -hmm. if something hits it the alarm's going to go off. Those are really yeah. great. They're a little expensive, I know. It's it's kind of hard. Sure, but it's um, worth it for because some the, families. the price to pay if something happens is exactly. far greater. Exactly, exactly. When I was young in our family, in our church, 
uh, a neighbor's child drowned in their pool, and they it, it distraught them so they filled it in, and then years later they they moved away. They just really it couldn't is devastating, even do that. I'm sure. And that's the family family that had the pool, mm -hmm. and I, so I it really imagine. affects a whole community. And what, what are your thoughts? Like I know when my my kids were little. Um, and we had a pool. I took them to the YMCA to get swimming yes. lessons. So, like, if they did fall in, they sort of knew how to climb out. Is that something that would be yes. um, advised? Absolutely. Teach children about water. Mm -hmm. Teach them not to panic. But if they end up in water, it's really the self-rescue mm -hmm. part of swimming lessons when they're really young mm -hmm. is, is very vital so that, that if they go down, they come up and they get on their back and they bring their face up out of the water and stay calm. And then they're also taught to t be able to turn and look for the edge, mm -hmm. look for the place where they can get out into more shallow mm -hmm. water and things like that. But first it is to come up, put their face up out of the water, take some breaths, calm down, you know, you're okay, you're okay. Now, what are you going to do? And you can start to turn and learn how to tread water. That's so a those practice, are the good practice for anybody. Exactly. Just to put yourself maybe in a potential situation. So Right, right, exactly. It, it, right, and children can yeah. learn, even very young children, and they do remember. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to do a lot of repetition. You have to constantly remind them right. and so on. With children, especially with ASD and so on, that constant repetition, support, you know what to do. Bring your face mm -hmm. out. Remember, calm down. It's okay. I think Just panic breathe. would probably be one of the biggest. Oh, exactly. Exactly. challenges not to be panicked when you find yourself in that situation. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Um, so I'd like to go through sure. some of the things that parents can do mm -hmm, because it kind of includes some of that mm -hmm. information. And I apologize, but I'm going to look down at my paper because no, it's, no, it's a lot. No, Identify <laughs> and be mindful of the water mm -hmm. around you, um, around your home. If your children are going to grandma's for vacation or of relatives, house that they've never been to, those people need to say, okay, what can we do to make sure mm -hmm. these children are safe, mindful of water mm -hmm. water around them, pools, rivers, streams, and so on. Keeps toys not being used out of the pool area. Little children will see something, oh, I want that dog, mm -hmm. go in there. Before you know it, they've slipped in the pool. Uh, water safety rules and so on. You can't go in the pool unless mommy and daddy are with you. Mm -hmm. You have to hold my hand and so on. Uh, be sure pools have the perimeter fence and the self-locking gates. Um, have a good a Coast Guard approved life jacket. Those are the best way to help children. I was at the oceanfront the other day and I saw several children with these real cute little little life jackets mm -hmm. on, but I was sure they were very good. The little swimmies and other things, they, they're they not really that like good. Like the water wings and things like the that. The water wings, they have sometimes a little thing that comes mm -hmm. across the chest, so it helps bring their face up out of the water, and they've got these big things here, that are, and they're not a uh, blow up. Right. The blow up ones can break and lose sure. air and so on, so you don't want those totally. Mm -hmm. The other ones might be safety approved, but if instead of spending money on something that kind of goes around their arms, right. just get them a good life vest. Mm -hmm. And then if you have a friend that you want to go out in the boat with, that's what you need to have mm -hmm. to be legal and safe for your child. Um, all the stores, um, in a Walmart, Target, all sewn stores sell products, and you're, there is a label for Coast Guard approved, mm -hmm. Amazon.com, anything like that, and they're reasonably priced, and they're mm -hmm. cute. They have little cute pictures right. on them, so children are happy to wear them, you know. Um, and then uh, supervision, adult needs to be at arm's distance to a child. Even in the ocean, even someplace you really need to be where you can grab that child right. so quickly. Um, and you should have one adult watching each child because you've got several people right. in there. Some people think that because there's a lifeguard at the Y rec centers or where ha wherever, the community pools. No, it's like it's definitely sounds that's like that's usually it's, a yes. ratio of one to twenty five, and so, that's too much. And I know we have a lot to cover. Okay, well, let me go through just a couple more. Teach children, absolutely. Teach children never to swim in, in, in any body of water alone. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Supervise children that should be to jump into the water feet first. Mm -hmm. Children, I'm a, I'm a previous neurology nurse, and we had children that had been swimming in like a pond, mm -hmm. but then there was a storm and things moved, and they dove in, oh, no. and they're paralyzed from the neck down. Oh. You don't want anything like that. You know, tree branches, rocks can move around, and so they need to go in in feet first, always. Um, and the little toddler pools, when you have your little toddler out there and they're playing in the water and what have you, when you go inside with a toddler, mm -hmm. 
you empty that pool because a, that child that, can come yes. outside and end up in that water and it just takes that much. It just takes so little and so quickly. So, so how do you recognize when someone is drowning or how there, there are, are really certain for. things that really kind of indicate to you um, the child will be in the water and they don't thrash and kick and scream. They can't. Mm -hmm. They've already got probably water in their trachea, water maybe down in their lungs. They're gasping, maybe hyperventilating. You may not really see that, but you'll see kind of this gasping. Head will tilt back with the mouth open. They'll come up and try to come up, but their mouth will be open. They're trying to find a way to get, to get air. Um, mouth will be at or below the surface, but they may bob up and down a little bit. So they're not playing. Mm -hmm. That can be serious. Better to grab them and find out they're okay or not, you know. Vertical in the water with little leg movement. The children will kind of bring their legs up and down, but you really can't necessarily see that. Their eyes will be closed. Little girls or boys, they may have the hair will cover mm -hmm. their face, but they don't try to move it away. Mm -hmm. um, and they may bob up and down. And so it is real important because it's silent and it can be an illusion by moving water and children playing. And you've got this child just kind of going up and down and then they don't come up. Yeah. Then they're going down to the bottom. Yeah. And that's probably too late. Really, well, really too just, late. Thank you so much for coming on to talk about this. I know, like, already this summer we've heard about a yes, lot of unnecessary, yes, unnecessary. Up, I think, on the northern neck in the, yes. in the bay. It's just heart-wrenching. So, yeah. so we want our children to not be afraid of water, to, but to have a healthy respect for it. Yes, yes. So where can someone go for more information? Because I know you have a lot of information on this Yes, topic. yeah, I do. Um, safekids.org on a uh, computer mm -hmm. program, you know. Um, stopdrowning.org, stopdrowningnow.org, um, the Consumer Product Safety Commission, mm -hmm. cpsc.gov, uh, ymc ymca.org, mm -hmm. and water safety. And there's lots of great information there. And then YouTube, and I'm going to show this picture, Drowning is Silent. It is a TV station. It is myfox9.com, mm -hmm. and it really shows a picture of this child that is kind of really in trouble, and mm -hmm. it really depicts what is really important for people to understand. She can't yell. She can't splash. She can't breathe. She needs help. And that's really the message. If you go on YouTube, there's another one that I really, I just found it last night, Drowning is Quick and Silent. It's a little girl right. telling a little story. And it's really, really hit home because now this little girl becomes an adult and that child drowning really is still so you know prominent in her it mind. Is, it is such yeah. a sad and And preventable there's one other thing I do situation. want to mention as well is that uh, children can if you grab a child and they cough a lot and you, they were having trouble they're coughing and so on but they say they're okay and probably they very well could be they really should be monitored very very closely because there is a a secondary or delayed drowning and I'm going to read this here because it, it, it just really talks about how well to understand it happens when a child inhales water into her lungs causing inflammation or edema and they may be coughing mm -hmm. and so on but then they seem okay you know the child the edema can occur hours or even days later after the initial contact with the water death from delayed drowning is due to swelling of the air sacs in the lungs preventing oxygen to be able to transfer so get and your so children checked out if it, exactly any a really good doubt. clinician needs to be really listening to those breast sounds I'm a nurse I listen to breast sounds mm -hmm. in the in the past a lot, I would say get an ER physician, a pediatrician to listen to that child's lungs. They're the ones really, really in tune to listening really so well. It's never, never a problem. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you, Kim, for the great thank information you. on such mm -hmm. an important topic. I yes, really thank you so it. much. Thank yes. You. Mm -hmm. That does it for this edition of A Closer Look, and be sure to join us next time.